let's go to the first quarterback to be drafted. And, John, I want to start with you because you're going with Malik Willis, and he's the favorite right now at minus 170. I mean, even when the season was ending, Malik Willis, we weren't even seeing him in first-round mocks a lot of the time. And here he is yeah. as the first quarterback. Uh, Who is the favorite to go off the board? Yeah, Amanda, this to me is is you, you kind of got to take the numbers and be interesting to get Ryan in on this pick as well. You kind of got to take the numbers and the logic and the rationale and certain picks in the draft and set them aside simply because in the NFL draft, people like shiny things. They like shiny objects that are new, right? So you talked about kind of leading up to the draft. The conservative pick here is obviously Kenny Pickett. I don't think that any rational human being that covers this game would, would challenge that statement. But what I will say is I, I think that, that Willis has got a, a greater upside. Uh, and I don't think anybody would argue with that. When you watched his performance throughout the season, there were some inconsistencies. I get that. When you look at his pro day, you could look at his arm strength. Stands only 6'1", 219. So you've got a lot of positives you can add up, a lot of negatives you can add up. He is an explosive playmaker. You saw that. I think the conservative spot is Kenny Pickett. But as I look at the draft and the needs, I think Pickett goes somewhere between 17 and 19. Then I pivoted back to Malik. And I just think this is worth a stretch for me. I think there's a GM out there. I'd like the pick right here. I think he's going to be the first quarterback that comes off the board. John, there's a lot to like about what you just said. And I'll start with the, the last thing you said. Kenny Pickett is probably more a bottom of the first uh, round guy, bottom half of the first round. I don't know if that's going to happen because, as you also noted, shiny things seem to distract front office types as we get closer to late April. And I think that's exactly what's going to happen. Truth be told, for me, there's only one quarterback in this class that has a first-round grade for me, and that's Matt Corral, and I think he's a late first-rounder. It ain't going to play out that way. Matt Corral's currently plus 1,600, so uh, you're going to make a ton of money if you think he's the first quarterback going, and that actually happens. But I'm going with a safe pick, and you talked about it, Kenny Pickett. I agree with you. He is a bottom-of-the-first-half uh, first-round guy, and perhaps even early second-rounder, if we're being honest with ourselves. But teams this time of year tell themselves a lot of stories to make themselves feel better about what they're going to end up doing on draft night. And here's the thing. Should Kenny Pickett go to the Panthers? No, no quarterback should go to the Panthers because you're going to end up having a very disappointing season through no fault of your own. But that's going to happen. It certainly feels like it, whether it's Malik or, or Kenny. And I think you're right. I think Ken, um, Malik has the most upside without question. I'm only going Kenny here because there, there are some links between he and Matt Rule in terms of Matt Rule's time at Temple when he recruited – uh, Kenny Pickett, and he committed there for a moment. That said, Scott Fitterer, the general manager at Carolina, came from Seattle where they drafted some guy named Russ Wilson, who I still think is doing okay in the league. So it's half a dozen to one. You can certainly sell me on your argument, John, for sure. I just like the plus money here a little better with Kenny Pickett. So that's, a, that's the direction I went. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game, the highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics? Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.